As I mentioned earlier, sometimes questionnaires include questions where the response is backwards, so to speak. The idea is that someone who is generally responding positively to the questions would respond negatively, and vice versa. That helps increase validity by allowing us to check for response patterns and more precisely measure the variable. That only happens, though, if we remember to account for those items when we're interpreting the responses. We do that by reverse scoring. In SPSS, it's known as recoding. The short grit scale includes four items that are reverse scored. When we have a data file open, we can get to that dialog box by selecting the transform menu and selecting recode into same variables. Note that we can also recode into different variables, which means that we don't replace the original data, but that makes our data set a little messier, so we will we'll, we'll replace the original data. That will take us to a dialog box that looks like the one on the left. We'll select the variables that need to be reversed from the list on the left, and then click on the arrow in the middle to move them to the box labeled Variables. The dialog box on the right in the slide is an example of what it looks like after we move the variables. At this point, you might be wondering how to know what variables to select. They're usually clearly identified in the scoring information for the questionnaire. In the case of the short grit scale, it was a little bit of a treasure hunt to find the information. Scoring details were included in the article discussing the original, slightly longer measure. The related table is included at the bottom of the information sheet for this unit, but I usually find it easier to create a table like the one at the top of the page to summarize everything. To move on from here, we'll click the button labeled Old and New Values. This is the place where we tell the software what to change. For our purposes, there are three important areas. The box where we specify the old value, the box where we specify the new value, and the box where it keeps track of the resulting pairs. The response that the participant selected is called the old value, and the score we want to change it to is called the new value. The idea in this process is that we literally flip the scores. If a 5 was the highest and a 1 was the lowest, we would change 5s to 1s and 1s to 5s. Note that after you enter a value in the box <clears throat> in the section I've labeled 1 and enter a value in the box I've labeled 2, you need to click Add below where I have the number 3 to record the change. You'll need to do that same thing multiple times, once for each change. So you'll end up with a list of values and all of the response options will appear in the left side of the old to new list and all of the new values will appear on the right side of the list. When the response scale has an odd number of options, the middle number will stay the same, but I usually add it to the list to make it a little easier to keep track of the flow. When you're done, click Continue, and then click OK. This is one place that having the output window is very nice. It records the details of the change to remind us what we did, confirm it was done, and let us check our work.